tell us from our agenda if there's comments from our citizens. Any other citizen comments about our agenda tonight? Is there any citizen comments at all in general? Just for the record, can you please state your name and address, please? Sure. Go ahead. Yes. Um, uh, you, you, you might have to turn it on. Lauren Kennedy, 2315 Third Avenue, um, I'm here tonight in regards to the incident that happened around the corner from Young Grant Avenue. Um, I'm here because my son attends daycare right next door, um, and my concern for when the incident did happen, my son's daycare was not notified, um, and I feel that they should have been, so they could have done some type of lock-in. Um, in talking to the manager, uh, my son attends Lux Avenue Daycare next door. Um, she had no idea of the incident, and they were about to take a walk, and a neighbor informed them of what was going on. Um, it was brought to my attention, um, Mr. Rankowski, you had shared that an officer visited the daycare after the incident, and in speaking with uh, Sue Lutz, that did not occur. Um, so I'm here tonight just to ask if something has not already been discussed and um, a plan put in place that you please consider making a plan on how to notify not only hopefully that this incident, uh, an incident like that does not occur in my or anywhere else again, um, but just have a plan in place to notify daycares or other places that care for children other than our schools to ensure their safety. Yeah, uh, I'd like to make a comment on that because uh, trust me, my friend might, might not know how it's just sure. used, and it still does because it's an active investigation still. But uh, I'm not trying to, I don't recall talking <coughs> to anybody about the daycare. I was concerned about the daycare, so were they. I never said that an officer, I don't remember saying anything about an officer going there. Because I knew the person. What was shared. Even, uh, it was not said to me, but it was shared. I talked to a couple of people on the other side on Fifth Avenue. They were all concerned. They called me. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so are we. I mean, you got an extra street light over there to break it up and try to get things going. And I know the daycare walks constantly. And, but I don't recall. But yeah, that's a. Good point. It, it, it should have been a lockdown just like any other school. Do you out. have more like police presence right now? Because you said it's still an open investigation. Yeah, I report. I requested more uh, patrols uh, on behalf of the residents and the homeowners that were invaded. So I can't. I'm not up all night long. I do. I did talk to the chief. The chief verified that with me to say yes. Sir. And matter of fact, our officers were there most of that night into the next morning, but yet yeah, people said they didn't see anybody, but they were there. Well, no, I, we did see Well, say. right. But but it, it's, trust me, it's everybody's concerned. And it's going to take time. And you need that little bit of time to keep it going. And it's, well, it's been, we've been there I since know. 2006, and well, it's I, been ongoing, and I feel it's, like it's. Yeah, so that now is we're on a very very this, serious level. This is the one that we really want to make sure we got it right. And we hope we do get it right. So everybody say so. Thank you. Thank you. mentioned to me that an officer went to the daycare and talked to them. So that's why I'm Yeah, I'm not. That's yeah, why I, I, I talked to her. I all think, know that. The chief <laughs> may have told me that afterwards okay. because I did meet with him the next day okay. to make sure that I, I would hope it was a lockdown. But yeah. I, I'm not sitting here. I'm not going to back that up. I don't recall it right. because there was so much going on. But I do. I did talk to the chief even after you to make sure we had the extra control to exactly because my family was running off the boat, and I didn't have the answers for it. Right, right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big concern for me because it's my family that's over there across the street, my son, my daughter-in-law, my grandson, and then a bunch of his friends that are in the daycare. And, you know, like um, Lauren said, you know, that daycare wasn't even notified. Well, that's really scary. That's really, really scary to me. And I know the residents in that area. Um, I and my sister go walking around there all the time. We were getting ready to cross the street. 
and we saw the police presence. I mean, that part of the neighborhood is very occupied all the time with kids, with adults, with people walking. Um, and we really need that police presence over there. Um, even in my in my area, and there's been, uh, car break-ins and so forth. And, and this, this situation with this person that's um, been nine years in the making, and you know, I'm afraid uh, that something bad's going to happen before this guy gets put away. You know, and that's a situation I don't think any of us want to deal with, and I know certainly I do. Um, I don't know what can be done, what I'd like to know, maybe some suggestions, what our community, what our um, officials can offer to, to us as residents to keep uh, people safe, our children safe, our grandchildren safe. Uh, I mean, the only thing that I can say is, you know, if you see something that you're not comfortable with, they'll call 911. I mean, that's the only real advice I can uh, I, uh, I, I can give you. Better be better to be safe than sorry. Better for officers to go out and investigate something and come back and say that it's nothing. So you know, if you see any if you see any suspicious activities or you think something is not in the norm, you know, um, you know, please call 911. I'm not saying to react on every little thing, but you live there, you know who your neighbors are, you know, you know who comes and goes. So again, if, if you see anything, I mean, the chief always says, yeah, he has a, a, a open door policy. I'm sure that he'd be more more than welcome to to uh, speak with you. So, okay. George, right. we have a list of all the daycares in, in town, right? Yeah. So uh, I get we can put them on the same notification of the school. So what I think we need to do is follow up with uh, Delaware County because uh, that would situations like this. You would assume that it would spur a reverse not one call from the county. So we just we should follow up from them and see, what, you know, was, was there a disconnect? Was there something that needs to happen? Uh, what, you know, I don't know what the call came in is, as I don't know right. what the mechanisms there, but um, that typically is where that would live. So, uh, and that's been advised to us by the county and other uh, high level officials over and over again that you know that kind of communication should be coming from the county. Right, right. So I don't, I don't know how you guys work, or maybe that's a process that can get put in to some kind of guides or booklets or something. Well, yeah, we, we, we have to do a little better on that. You're absolutely right. And, and that was my, I mean, everybody's already said it. And we do have that. The fire department implements it any time there's a major spot that they just reverse the time on one. Did it happen? We don't know. We got to do a better job on it next time to make sure our daycare is like Mr. Biaco was saying. The school district has it where they got a certain list that it just hits. And if that's what we need to do, we need to get to list that daycare and figure it out. And just if something's in that area, you hit it in the service. Uh, I apologize. I don't. I, somebody may have said it to me. I don't recall it, but like I said, you're absolutely right. And there is people standing in their driveways at the same time, and anything could happen. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other citizen comments at all? We feel like to speak. All right, let the record show there are no more citizen comments, and we'll move on to our engineer's report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you do have a copy of my report. Uh, the first on the agenda is the 2020 Road Program. I have gotten, uh, well, we do have the initial list that was sent from the highway department. I have a few of the commissioners uh, with their list, which is, uh, but I don't have all of the, uh, any additional streets if anyone's interested. I'd like to get that, that cost estimate together so that we can get a, a bid out. We already have the 329 into the system. It's already been approved by PennDOT, so we can move forward with, with the bids um, for next month. Can I have some money on that for you? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you till Monday. You have a grace period. Thank you. <laughs> um, the Wawa development, the reason uh, I asked that this be put on the agenda, we did receive revised plans for the Wawa project, and um, Right now, Alex is verifying that the stormwater calculations and the plans actually are, are coordinated. Uh, the last set that we had, 
trip, final design, and the and the limb plans are not coordinated. So I want to make sure that uh, if they are next week, what I would like to do is uh, put the resolution together for the traffic signal re replacements that, that are going to be done as well. And I don't know whether the solicitor has um, has a copy or has had the opportunity. There are two agreements that PennDOT is requesting that the applicant uh, provide to the township that the township would have to enter into. That would be for the maintenance of the median that, that is going along um, Meeting House Road, and then as well the um, lighting that, that is being done. So we, we have some, we have uh, actually two highway occupancy permits, one for the signal, one for the discharge of the stormwater into the PennDOT system. We'll have to maintain that as well. And um, I'd like to get those on the agenda if everything's okay next week. I do not have that information. I also received um, a request with a traffic uh, calming methods for the K Avenue. The location of the, of the two areas uh, that they want to put speed cushions. Speed cushions are a little different than the speed uh, tables that we have been putting in. Cushions are only about three inches high and they're, they're rubber. I told them we will not accept the rubber cushions. I, it's just, that's just a maintenance headache. We don't want to be, go there. But one of the questions was whether or not we would accept the speed cushions. Quite frankly, I don't think they'll do the job that we're expecting that the speed table would do because they, you put three or four of these in a spot and supposedly because the car's um, kind of wobbling through the, in, through the area, uh, it'll slow down. I, I don't see that happening. So if we are going to do this, I'm going to suggest speed tables in those areas, but I want to get um, some feel from the board whether or not they felt it was absolutely necessary. It was something that we had talked about at a meeting with Wawa um, so two months ago, I guess it was now. Right. Does that have to be like now or we could actually get into it to say, hey, we may... I mean, I, I know you want a commitment. If we want some kind of traffic counting because we know we're going to have an issue somewhere down. Well, you believe that there is going to be, whether it's there or perceived or, I get it, of course. So to answer your question, I think what we could do is have it on a plan that if at any point in time the township feels that it's necessary, that they be placed. We'd have to have them escrow that money so we would, we would be available should we want, want them in. They would have to do that. Now, is that the only resource of the tables, or is the streets not quite wide enough for like, a strip down an uh, island? To put some, an island now. Like, yeah. um, to put chicanes so you would lose parking. Or, or, so we're trying to maximize the parking for the residents, make sure that everybody is safe and, and, and speeds are kept to the minimum. And let me, uh, let, me, let me take a walk in the neighborhood and talk to, I mean, there's probably not many houses up to the uh, stop sign, like, just to get their feeling about the tables, and uh, I'd rather be proactive with it and try to... And you have a copy of the right. sketch, I right. forwarded right. a copy of the sketch, so okay. that is something, that's the reason that I had it on the agenda. AutoZone, we, we already discussed, um, if anyone has any questions or some thoughts during the week, I will have to put the, the um, resolution together for next, month, next week's meeting. Uh, community Development Block Grant 2019, this is the Wayfair signage project. We had a, the pre-construction meeting. Um, we are proposing to give Canal Construction a notice to proceed on the 16th, Monday the 16th of March. Uh, one of the reasons that we're holding off from the notice to proceed is that we do need to get the welcome sign uh, specification to the contractor so he can get it to the manufacturer. Um, you do have some various uh, 
different images. I think that, that not I think, I know Mr. Seidel put together based on information that, that George had given him. Um, so we will need to get that uh, resolved before I would give a notice to proceed to it now. The Greenwood Avenue payment request, um, it's here. I don't, I do not have a copy of that. Uh, Colleen sent it over, but she did not give me a copy. I don't know what that payment is. I will tell you that there was a question from the residents whether there was it was going to be sealed. It is all completed. It is sealed. So uh, we are recommending a final payment for the Greenwood Avenue um, inlets. Otherwise, I can report general progress. And if anyone has any questions, I certainly will try to answer those. So any questions for our township engineer? One quick one. And I probably should have said it with these guys. Was there any talk about auto zone? No more than many vehicles at the time in the position like it was auto zone. The only discussion that we had was for them to provide uh, trash receptacles because it happens that people buy the materials and do the work right in the parking lot. I don't know whether anything, Barb was here, I don't know whether anything came up at the planning commission meeting concerning that. Um, but as far as, as the engineering, there was no discussion. That, that would be a zoning issue anyway. If they were doing work in So how do we prevent that? I mean, can we violate the camp before work? Because that would be an auto repair shop as opposed to a auto parts store sales. Because I don't know what you had in place already for the other one. Across the street. the vans I know that it's just batteries and windshield wipers. And that was it. I don't know how we did that back in the day. Yeah. And probably be through zoning because it didn't come into as a land development because it's a pre existing structure. So, I mean, essentially, what we would do is if there was a complaint that that is happening, then we, you know, we would open up a zoning complaint against the, you know, the owner of the property and then proceed forward with the appropriate steps. Aren't they generally restricted to like windshield wipers and batteries? Yeah, and that's. I mean, they don't do. A lot of those restrictions come from the company. They don't want people out in the parking lot. We're going to set a couple down there. <coughs> <laughs> Are there some other questions for our engineer? We'll move on to our solicitor's report. Mm -hmm. 